Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So we have some massive news this morning. ARK Invest launching a new space-themed ETF. In this video, we'll look at the size of the investment opportunity in space and why ARK has decided to start this space-themed ETF. I'll review the holdings in ARK's space-themed ETF, including whether or not they hold any SpaceX stock. And I'll share what I think about the ETF, whether or not I'm considering investing now or in the future. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. Account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. First and foremost, let's actually look at the size of the opportunity ARK Invest are going after with their space-themed ETF. We're reading from the ARK Invest Big Ideas 2021 report, link in description. We're just focusing on the orbital aerospace opportunity, which is obviously where this ARK Invest space-themed ETF is targeting. Orbital aerospace. The space industry is literally taking off. Rocket and satellite cost declines are upending what once seemed a monopolistic and bureaucratic industry. And just jumping in here, that is a major understatement. Thanks to advancements in deep learning, mobile connectivity, sensors, 3D printing, and robotics, costs that have been ballooning for decades are beginning to decline. As a result, the number of satellite launches and rocket landings is proliferating. According to ARK's research, the orbital aerospace opportunity, including satellite connectivity and hypersonic flight, will exceed $370 billion annually. Just jumping in here again for those of you who seriously suck at math. That is about one third of a trillion dollars. Relatively large opportunity, in my opinion. Orbital aerospace is a big idea. The way that ARC are breaking down the orbital aerospace opportunity into three major segments. Global connectivity, roughly 50% of the global population lacks internet connectivity today, which is absolutely mind blowing. Just think about the things that have happened since half the world got online. The other half in the next few years will also be joining the party. Hypersonic point-to-point -point travel. As long-haul flight times collapse from 10 plus hours to two to three hours, the global economy could transform. I absolutely agree on this one. And of course, there's the major overarching mission of making life a multi-planetary species. Rocket reusability could lower the cost of launches by an order of magnitude. Thus far, SpaceX has flown the same Falcon 9 rocket booster eight times successfully. We all know SpaceX is going after reusability. This is a holy grail of space. Look at the cost difference, say, between the 2016 Atlas V rocket versus reusable Falcon 9, and of course, in the future, a reusable Starship as SpaceX continued to iterate and speed up the process. I mean, just visually, look at this. Future cost, past cost. I mean, I don't even need to say anything else. Lower satellite launch costs could enable continuous global coverage with low latency. Massive shout out to SpaceX's Starlink. While satellites launched into geostationary orbit attempted to offer global coverage, latency limited their ability to provide a compelling broadband internet offering. Today, companies are beginning to launch thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit and enabling continuous global coverage with low latency. You guys can see just really roughly Arc trying to visualize this low Earth orbit, very close, less latency, signals traveling less distance versus geostationary orbit. And thanks to lower launch costs, the number of satellites scheduled for orbit has increased significantly. We see here the number of active satellites in 2005, 2018, 2019, and 2020 growing steadily, and 25,000 plus planned satellites in the future. We can see huge proliferation. I mean, this again just visually sums up the opportunity for satellite enormously. And how do satellites get up? Oh, that's right, they need to be launched. Satellite broadband revenues could approach $10 billion per year in the US and $40 billion globally during the next five to 10 years. According to ARC's research, the $40 billion opportunity to serve populations without access is a fraction of the total addressable market for satellite broadband. So what ARC is saying here, part of the opportunity relates to getting people connected who currently aren't, but there's more than meets the eye. The market for connected planes, trains, and motor vehicles is likely to reach $36 billion in 2025. In total, the satellite connectivity market could approach $100 billion annually over the medium term. ARC projecting here a $10 billion annual addressable market just in the US alone, serving only Americans who don't already have broadband, which is $42 million, $10 billion opportunity. Then there's the other $3 billion on planet Earth who currently don't have access to broadband. That in itself, a $40 billion annual addressable market. And finally, ARC expects the demand for hypersonic flights to skyrocket. 
Was that a really bad pun again? Oh God, anyway. According to our research, passengers on short haul flights are willing to pay roughly $15,000 for every two hours saved on private planes. Based on the economics of the short haul flight market, ARC estimates that passengers and businesses will be willing to pay $100,000 to save 13 hours on a two to three hour private hypersonic flight from New York to Japan. If 2.7 million passengers were to pay around $100,000 for long haul hypersonic flights, the market would scale to $270 billion in annual revenues. So just looking at the breakdown of people flying here, around four and a half billion passengers flew in 2018. 15% of those flights were over seven hours, most of them probably international versus domestic. Around 680 million passengers flew on flights longer than seven hours. And anyone who's ever been on a long haul flight, unless you're an amazing sleeper, will relate. Generally speaking, it's a fairly hellish experience. This creates around a 2.7 million person potential annual hypersonic flight addressable market. What a mouthful. At around $100,000 per hypersonic flight, that's $270 billion in annual revenue. So now that we've sized up the enormous space opportunity, Let's have a look at ARK Invest ARK X space themed ETF, its top holdings, and try to get an understanding of why ARK have created this fund and what its main purpose is. So, in their own words, why invest in ARK X? Exposure to space exploration, including orbital and suborbital aerospace, enabling technologies, and beneficiaries of aerospace activities such as agriculture, internet access, global positioning system, GPS, construction, and imaging. As we can see here, the ARCX ETF launches on March 30th, 2021. That's tomorrow for those of you who are watching the video the day that it's published. And for everyone else, well, it's already taken off. The fund description and objective, the ARC Space Exploration and Innovation ETF's investment objective is long-term growth of capital. Well, no shit, ARC. Thanks for letting us know. It goes on to say that the ARCX ETF, under normal circumstances, will invest at least 80% of its assets in domestic and foreign equity securities of companies that are engaged in the fund's investment theme of space exploration and innovation. That includes companies that are leading, enabling, or benefiting from technologically enabled products and or services that occur beyond the surface of Earth. That includes orbital aerospace companies, that stuff that can actually put things into orbit, aerospace companies which can put things up but can't actually get into orbit, enabling technologies companies including artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, materials and energy storage, interestingly, and aerospace beneficiary companies which are companies whose operations stand to benefit from aerospace activities like agriculture, internet access, GPS systems, imaging, construction, drones, air taxis and electric aviation vehicles. Shout out to future electric VTOLs. Here we are looking at the top, in fact all holdings in Arc Space exploration and innovation ETF. Spoiler alert, there's no SpaceX stock in ARC space exploration and innovation ETF. Why? SpaceX still currently a private company. However, I'm pretty confident that once Starlink is spun out and IPOs as its own separate publicly traded company, I suspect it's going to become a very large position in ARC space ETF. We can see here the largest holding Trimble. Got some 3D printing stuff here. I'll run through a few names you guys might know. JD.com, Lockheed Martin, Iridium Communications, Boeing, NVIDIA, Amazon.com, Teradyne, Alphabet, aka Google, and all the way down at number 20, Virgin Galactic, aka SPCE. I know a lot of you folks have been very interested in this. Now, I've said this in the past, I'm going to say it again, and I'm probably going to keep repeating this until it's no longer true. I think the majority of the valuation on Virgin Galactic, honestly, isn't coming from fundamentals on the company, although I do wish them all the best, but people who really desperately want a piece of the space industry and can't really find a better substitute. Well, maybe this ARC space ETF will now be that better substitute. But even so, the fact that Virgin Galactic is in this fund is a good sign. However, it is their 20th largest holding, representing just under 2% of the fund. There's Alibaba in here as well. A little bit of Netflix, Taiwan Semiconductor, even some Tencent in there as well. And just for you guys, I've actually taken the liberty of tallying all of the holdings in the ARC Space ETF and the grand total at launch, just over $1 billion in assets under management. However, the inflows begin tomorrow. Who knows how big or small this fund will end up over the long term. So what do I personally think about ARC space themed ETF and will I be investing? I actually love the idea of the ETF and I also think it's particularly intelligent that ARC have decided to not only focus on, for example, just launch companies, but also many supporting and ancillary services, businesses and technologies. This means there's gonna be a great variety in that fund. I mean, we saw Netflix and Amazon in this space ETF, along with Google. These all have a little bit of a finger in some of the pies that relate to the theme here. 
so it makes a lot of sense. However, personally, I'm not at all interested in investing in ARK Space ETF. Despite the fact that I'm a massive space nerd, to the point where the last couple of times I remember crying in my adult life were watching SpaceX boosters land, the very first re-landing, and then the Falcon Heavy boosters coming down together, that's how much I care about space, that's how much I'm excited about it, but if I can't own the most important company in space, SpaceX, which is still privately held and therefore ARK Invest in their ETFs cannot hold private companies, I'm not going anywhere near this thing. That's not to say that you can't get amazing gains on this. In fact, I think this is going to be a well-performing fund for a number of years. But I'm the kind of investor who'd rather invest in number one or not at all. That's why currently as I record this, I literally own one stock. Tesla. I am all in on Tesla stock. The majority of my net worth is in this single company. If I was the kind of investor who liked to spread my money around a little bit, second place, third place, 27th place as well, I'd own lots of other stocks. But I don't. That's just how I roll. Of course, I'd love to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comments below. Will any of you be investing in ARK's space-themed ETF? Do you own any space-themed stocks already? And are you a massive space nerd or is it just me? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. Comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.